welcome to another episode of In His Name, a show committed to firing you up for the supreme task of soul winning. Most of you will by now be familiar with the fact that we are busy working chapter by chapter through my book, Spirit of Fire. The topic of today's chapter, chapter three, is of fundamental importance. If what we are about to discuss did not exist, the Great Commission would have become the Great Omission. Why? Because the disciples had no power in themselves, they were desperately in need of the infilling and empowering of the Holy Spirit to get the job done. Yes, you guessed it. Our topic for today is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. At the end of the show, we will show you another powerful video put together by the Yes Yes team over at our media partner, CV Africa. And I encourage you, download the Yes Yes app from your app store and use these videos to witness to people about Jesus. They are powerful tools. It's a good idea for us to read what happened when the very first disciples were filled with the Spirit. We must remember that some days before this occurrence, Jesus had instructed his followers to go into all the world and preach the gospel, both healing the sick and setting the captives free. Yet, with this instruction came another. Do not go anywhere, Jesus said, until you have been filled with power from on high. The disciples and the story of their infilling can be found at the very beginning of Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. We must remember that even Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately after his water baptism, God baptized him with the Holy Spirit. We read this in Matthew chapter 3. When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were open to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. That being filled himself, Jesus set a pattern for us to follow. Once saved, the next step for the believer is this marvelous infilling. Before Jesus was filled, he did no mighty works. However, after he was filled, he became unstoppable. Certainly, if Jesus needed the Holy Spirit in order to do the work of God, you and I need him as well. At our Gospel Crusades, we always teach on and pray for the Holy Spirit baptism. We do not only want to see the lost saved and captives set free, but we also want to see all believers, whether they have only been saved for a few minutes or for a few decades, to be fully empowered for gospel service. We want to see them winning their own communities for Jesus, continuing the good work started on the crusade field. In his name, ministries learned the importance of doing this from Christ for All Nations, an evangelistic ministry founded by evangelist Reinhard Bonker over 40 years ago. I had the opportunity to ask Evangelist Bonker about the importance of getting believers baptized with the Spirit of God. Let us have a listen to what he had to say. So in every one of your crusades, you always pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Um, how important is it for evangelists to do that? That is extremely important. I. Uh, uh, think back of the very first crusade mm -hmm. I had when I launched out. Mm -hmm. um, I had just founded Christ for the Nations and I went to uh, uh, Gaborones mm -hmm. in uh, Botswana. You know, and uh, by a miracle that stadium was packed with people. Uh, we saw, for the first time, I saw uh, thousands of people getting saved. 3,000 per night. 
that was for me something so unusual. And then one day the Holy Spirit spoke to me and he said, tomorrow pray for the baptism and the Holy Spirit in the stadium. I said, Lord, this is not for a stadium meeting. This is for a prayer meeting. That's how, how I, what I had learned from others. This was not for a stadium. Uh, and the Lord said, gave me the reason why he wanted me to pray for the baptism in the Holy Spirit in the stadium. He said, because in the last days, I will pour my spirit out upon all flesh. I suddenly realized there is so much flesh around. There are not enough prayer meetings and enough churches, not even enough stadiums for God to do that. Well, if he wants a spirit to fall on all flesh, it has to be a huge place. I said, okay, Lord, okay, Lord, okay, Lord, I will, I will do it. And I stood up and I said, tomorrow you're going to see something you have never seen in your life. The Holy Spirit is going to come down right here in the middle of this stadium. I didn't tell them that I hadn't seen it either, <laughs> but I knew I was prophesying. The next day we had capacity crowd. I mean, it was full, 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 full. Um, uh, a teaching was given by somebody else about the baptism in the Holy Spirit and that somebody else had forgotten to mention a single word of the new tongues, the language of the Holy Spirit. And I was not happy. So I thought I, I, I had been the, in charge of that whole thing. I, I can always push something in. And the Lord said to me, leave it to me. Oh, I said, okay. So then I said, how many of you want to receive this gift you've just heard about? They all wanted it. I called them forward. And then I said, okay, close your eyes and lift your hands. And they did that. I said, Lord, that's all I know. You've got to step in now. I told the people, close your eyes, lift your hands. I kept my eyes open because I wanted to see what was about to unfold. And then the Holy Spirit came. I was the only one who saw it. It must have been a vision. It was a huge wave that moved in from my left side. A wave hundreds of meters high. Such a sparkling living water and it very slowly moved across the stadium, very slowly. And as I saw, saw it move across the stadium and touch the people, they all fell on their backs. And then I couldn't believe my ears. They all prayed in new languages as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. I stood there, Tamarin. I wept like a little boy. I cried, my God, my God, my God, is it possible? Is it possible? And then the Lord said, yes, it is possible. I realized one thing. Having seen a blood-washed Africa from Cape Town to Cairo, I realized that can only come about through a massive outpouring of the Holy Spirit. A massive outpouring of the Holy Spirit alone will break the devil's back, whether it's Africa or Europe or America or Asia or Australia or anywhere. And since that day, God had laid the pattern out for me. I still follow it until today, and I encourage other evangelists to do the same. This is extremely important from God's side. Amen, amen. Thank you very much, sir. God bless you, we Tamara. We appreciate your time. I could go all day. But...
sitting here with Herman Schnell from Revive All Nations Ministries. He is a fellow evangelist and we are going to have a little chat today about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Hammond, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. Hammond, you have got such a special story mm -hmm. of how you were filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, won't you share that with us, please? It will be a pleasure. Uh, it's like I can remember it yesterday. Uh, I was reading this book, my dad's book on the baptism with the Holy Spirit. It was a 200 page book. And I was so desperate. I read the book probably in a month. And when I got to the end of the book, uh, the author of the book said, just say this prayer and believe that you are filled. Mm -hmm. And I had so much expectation, but after getting to the end of the prayer, nothing happened. I felt despondent and discouraged. And then not too long after that, I attended a prayer meeting uh, with my dad in Solaris Pass, mm -hmm. just further from f a distance from Somerset West. And uh, it was a simple prayer meeting. A few old ladies were present. And I remember clearly we were singing a song called I Feel Jesus. And during the song, I felt this bubbling sensation rising up on the inside of me. And all of a sudden, out of my mouth, words started forming and I started speaking. And it was an overwhelming experience that I had. And ever since, my life has never been the same. Amen, amen. I always like to uh, describe that experience as a, as a saturation, yes, that yes. Jesus saturates yeah. you in the Holy Spirit. Mm. Right? You, you come out dripping, yes. you know, in the power of yes. God. It, yes. is, that, is that what happened That's to exactly you? That's exactly what happened. Uh, I felt so consumed with Him, yeah. immersed in Him, yeah. uh, like we were one. That was yes. the kind of experience that I had. Yeah. And yes. I got this boldness that I never had before. Oh, fantastic. And how old were you when that I happened? Was 19. 19 years old. When it happened, yes. Oh, fantastic. Yes. And now you're out there evangelizing, winning people for Jesus. And, and without that baptism, I mean, you, the Lord wouldn't be able to absolutely. flow through you with power. Ab absolutely, absolutely. Um, we need that. Every believer needs yes, that. Yes, most definitely. That's yeah. the empowerment that, you know, the Lord makes available to each believer. Yes, yes, indeed. Mm. Now, now tell me a little bit, Herman, about, about your ministry. Um, you've got a passion for souls. You're out there winning souls for Jesus. Um, tell me, wh what, do you, what do you do? How do you go about it? Well, uh, the ministry, um, it's, it's first and foremost a soul-winning ministry because that is what Jesus has, has called every believer yeah. to do. It's our primary calling yeah. after salvation to, to witness and to bring people to Christ. And when the Lord called me to start this ministry, uh, that was at the form, forefront of, of everything. The objective of Revival Nations is to win the lost and to revive God's church to awaken believers for soul winning and to go out there to, to places where uh, people need Jesus. Mm -hmm. We major in gospel crusades, uh, itinerant preaching, mm -hmm. uh, revive conferences, and also going out there to ignite believers. Yes. That's primarily what we do. And now obviously at these gospel crusades, you, you lead people in the salvation prayer, you yes. pray for healing. Is there a particular conversion, a particular miracle that, that sticks out in your, in your memory that was special You know, a you? recent crusade that I remember was in Mitchell's Plain, mm -hmm. and it was in a, in a town hall. Mm -hmm. And during the crusade, at the altar call, to my surprise, the security on duty oh. and the caretaker was at the altar. Oh, wow. The security got saved <laughs> and the caretaker came back to the Lord. Oh, wow. So they decided to skip protocol <laughs> and respond to the altar call. <laughs> I love so that. So that was exciting. Oh, that's fantastic. That was beautiful. That was at the altar. That's fantastic. I mean, that, that's such a, a reminder to, to every preacher to always do an altar always call. Always do an altar call, yes. Because you never know who's listening. Exactly. Um, I remember Evangelist Rana Bonka sharing once about a partner meeting. Mm. Um, that he was preaching at, and he, he knew all the partners there. He knew for a fact they were all saved. Mm. Um, but the Lord just kept prompting him, do an altar call, do an altar call. And he went ahead and he did it. And there the waiters and the waitresses wow. on duty wow. <laughs> came forward yes. and, and accepted the Lord. Amazing. Um, so absolutely essential. Mm. Mm. Absolutely essential. Mm. Um, you, you spoke before and you emphasized how it's the responsibility of every believer yes. um, to, to be used by the Lord mm. um, in witnessing and in praying for the sick. Right. Um, uh, how do you encourage fellow believers um, to go out there? Yes. You know, it can sometimes be a bit intimidating mm. um, or believers might think that because of their past, because of their background, the Lord can't use them. How yes. do you encourage believers to go, to well, go for it? Yes, <laughs> well, where I start with the believers, I would encourage them 
to remember that they are the body of Christ. Mm. Um, instead of looking at it as a collective, look at it as an individual first, mm. that you are the body of Christ. As a collective, we are the body of Christ, but personally, you are the body of Christ. And He desires to use you. He desires to use His body. Amen. And what a privilege it is to be used by God. Amen. So that's my starting point. Yes. Like in mass evangelism, uh, you know, many souls come to salvation, mm -hmm. but Jesus goes to each one individually. And when that happens and they receive Him as Lord and Savior, they become His body. Amen. And He desires to work through them. Amen. So I, I do that to encourage the believer yes. that it's a personal Savior and that it's a personal matter and that you're partnering with Him in the salvation yeah. of the lost. And of course, uh, you know, after salvation, to be filled with the Spirit is key. Amen. So I, I speak about that, I preach yes. about that, uh, the importance of being baptized in the Holy Spirit. And we've had experiences where it happens immediately. Yeah. Sometimes it happens, you know, when people drive home yes. or sleep in their bed. Yes. But with expectation, yes. the Lord you know, he fills his people. Amen. Oh, no, that's absolutely wonderful. Um, I just want to uh, encourage our viewers to, to follow Herman, Herman Schnell, Revive All Nations. Um, his website's at the bottom of the screen. Um, he is a, a on-fire evangelist for Jesus. Follow him, support him, pray for him, and he is going out there and he is getting the job done. Thank you so much, Herman. May our God richly bless you. We are praying for you. And thank uh, you. keep going for Jesus. I will. Thank you for having us. Absolute pleasure. God bless you. Amen. Thank you. I had the opportunity to ask Dr. Chauncey Crandall, a world-renowned cardiologist based in West Palm Beach in the United States, about his baptism experience, which took place in an operating theater of all places. And the Lord has used him mightily ever since. Let us have a listen to his story. Dr. Crandall, will you please tell us the story of how you were baptized with the Holy Spirit? Well, that was an amazing story because um, I was reading in the Bible mm -hmm. that there was a gift mm -hmm. that the Lord wanted to give everyone, and it was called the baptism mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit. But I attended a church that didn't believe mm -hmm. these things. And as a scientist mm -hmm. and as a physician, I had trouble believing mm -hmm. it too. But we were going through a situation at home and I wanted to receive this. Mm -hmm. I needed this gift and I was crying out to God for really months upon months. Mm -hmm. And after many months of praying to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I received it. But it wasn't in a way that I thought I should receive it. And what happened actually was that I was working in the hospital and this day, a woman came in with massive cardiac arrest. Her heart was working. She came into the operating room. We started working on this mm -hmm. woman. And as we were working on her, something happened. The, the, the gift, the baptism of the Holy Spirit that I had been praying for came on me. And in fact, what happened was that this woman was there, and as I was working on her, all of a sudden she went flatline on the table. Asystolic is what we call it. No heartbeat. And as I was getting ready to give the command to the nurse to do some treatment, mm -hmm. something deep from within started coming out of me, and actually this unknown language started pouring out of my mouth. And as it poured out of my mouth over this woman, my hands went up in the air uncontrollably. And I just stood there frozen. But this unknown language just kept coming out and coming out and coming out, a language I had never heard before. And in fact, it was bypassing my brain because it was coming from deep within. And inside my brain, I could see the action of the room. I could see the nurses, their response, but I had no control. And the Lord had control that day. The Lord said, I will show you the power of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And as I was praying in that new language, that heartbeat suddenly started coming back and life came into that woman. And I continued to pray uncontrollably. And then all of a sudden, I could speak normal. 
and I could bring my hands down. So you can imagine what the nurses thought in that room that day. Uh, they were astounded. What happened? Why were you speaking that way? But that was the day that I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. After many months of prayer and seeking God, it finally happened in that operating room. And you haven't stopped praying for the sick since. No, I haven't stopped praying for the sick. And we see the move of God, you know, every time we pray. He's a powerful God and He answers our prayers. I have heard that story so many times and I never tire of it. It is such a phenomenal reminder, not only of the power of this gift, but also of just how eagerly the Lord wants to give it to every single one of his children, even if it means interrupting a day's work. All we need to do is ask and he will give. Jesus spoke to his disciples about the importance of receiving the Holy Spirit. If a son asks for bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? This we read in Luke chapter 11. Jesus was specifically referring here to receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit. Today, if you are not yet filled, I invite you to do the following when you next spend time alone with Jesus. Ask Him to baptize you with His Spirit. Then, spend some time worshiping Him. Speak to your Lord, seek His face, pour out your heart to Him. Each opportunity you have from there on, ask Him to fill you until the job is done. It might happen in the privacy of your home, during a church service, or while you go about your daily routine, just like Dr. Crandall. Regardless of where it happens, it will happen. Being filled with the Holy Spirit is for every believer, including you. But how do you know that you have been filled? A heavenly language will bubble out of your, your innermost being. In, in short, the Holy Spirit within you is praying through you to God, catching your own spirit up in the flow. How glorious! The language you began praying or worshipping in will suddenly change into words that cannot be understood by the human intellect. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, we read, For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the Spirit he speaks mysteries. Remember, the Lord will not force your mouth open. So the more you speak to Him, the more you worship Him, the more opportunities He will have to cause this river of words to flow. Such language is as unique as your fingerprints and perfectly understood by God Almighty. Whenever you pray in it, you are always praying the perfect prayer. In addition, praying in this language strengthens, edifies and refreshes your spirit. The book of Jude says, but you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. As we conclude this episode, I would like now to pray for you to receive this wondrous gift. Oh, precious Jesus, I bring every single one of our viewers before you now. My Father, you know which ones of them are not yet filled and I thank you right now that you would give them this glorious gift. Wherever they are, overwhelm them with yourself, saturate them in your power and your presence and your personality. Let your sweet spirit fill them to overflowing, my Father, that they may become an unstoppable force in your kingdom plundering hell to populate heaven every day of their lives. We thank you, my Father. You have said receive and you will give. So Jesus, we ask you, we ask you for this gift and we thank you that you are going about right now, filling us, filling us with your spirit. In your name we pray, amen. As we do in all of our episodes, I would like to now show you another clip 
put together by the Yes Yes team. And I encourage you to use this clip and others like them in order to witness to your friends, your family, your colleagues about Jesus. They are fantastic. I highly recommend them. Life given freely. Grace like life is a gift. We cannot earn it. It just has to be received. We all need a little grace. God knows it is impossible for anyone to have it all together. We all need forgiveness for stepping out of sync with his dance. We all need grace to start again. Grace is a gift. So is forgiveness. Jesus didn't come to condemn the world, but to give the grace of God and bring forgiveness to all those who accept it. Your part is choice. Receive His forgiveness, live in His grace. Even though you didn't choose to be born, God believed in you and gave you life. Now believe in Him. Thank you, dear friend, for watching another episode of In His Name. No, I am praying for you that the Lord would baptize you with His Spirit. And once you have been filled, go, 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 and do not stop. May God richly bless you.